everybody. Welcome back to another session of the Hoppery. So, it's no secret here that one of my favorite styles of beer is the Imperial IPA. Uh, and what I think I've got here tonight uh, will be a pretty good treat for us. Uh, it's by a brewery called Victory. Um, they're out of Pennsylvania. And this is a beer that is not readily available around here. So as you probably know, I made a recent trip out to St. Louis to watch the uh, Cubs and Cardinals play. Uh, so I had a few minutes to hop over into Illinois and uh, go to a nice little liquor store over there in Columbia, Illinois, uh, and pick up a few beers to bring back with me. And this was one of them that I got. It's called Victory Hop Wallop. And this one is about an 8.5% alcohol by volume beer. Uh, which I would say is probably pretty, um, you know, normal for a beer of this style. Uh, anyway, I've not had this one before, so I'm actually really excited to try it. I've seen this on a couple lists of favorites, and um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to trying this one. So let's go ahead and pop it open and get this party started. All right. So we'll go ahead and pour it. And again, I'm just going to use a tulip. Um, you know, I don't think it's too bad to use a tulip for most beers that you drink. Um, for me especially, like I said, when I'm tasting beers um, and really want to pull out those aromas, I always reach for a tulip glass just because I think it's a little bit easier to uh, kind of get those smells forced up into your nose. So without further ado, I am going to go ahead and start smelling this one because I'm pretty psyched. So not a, not a ton of hops. Uh, I really am kind of getting some of that grapefruit essence uh, that's commonly associated with a double IPA. Um, I do get a little bit of pine. Some of the grassier components that you'll get from some of those hops. I'm not getting the real sugary sweet, um, you know, pineapple and mango qualities that you normally would get from a bigger IPA. Believe it or not, I'm almost pulling out just a touch of like a uh, like a Belgian style yeast. Um, I you know I don't know how long uh, this beer's been sitting around. In fact, I actually have had it in my fridge since I got home. So um, I do want to point out. Actually, this would be a really good time to point out that when you buy really hoppy beers, so say India Pale Ales, Imperial India Pale Ales. Make sure as soon as you get home that you throw those right in the fridge. If you leave them sitting out in your basement even, um, or out on the counter, or wherever, those hop qualities really start to die. So I'm not sure if that's the case with this one yet or not. Um, like I said though, the, the aroma is not just, it's not giving me a wallop. How about that, huh? Yeah, okay, so um, let's go ahead and give this one a taste and uh, see where we land. Okay, well, I'm definitely getting some hop out of the, um, out of the finish. Um, I would say it's more bitter uh, than it is bright, so that leads me to believe that either some of the uh, ar aromatic hops have started to dwindle since this beer was made, or that Victory just uses uh, more bittering hops uh, than they do aroma hops and flavoring hops as well, I should say. Let's give it another go. I would really compare this one to Odell's IPA, um, which by the way, if you haven't had Odell's IPA, look for it. I think that's a uh, pretty readily available beer, uh, and I think it's one of the most underrated IPAs out there as well. This one's pretty close, um, though I would even go so far as to say that I probably prefer the Odell IPA to this one. I'm not saying this is a bad beer. You know, I would drink three or four of these and, and be just fine. Um, but I think, you know, when it comes to an Imperial IPA, I like to have a little bit more, um, I guess, brightness in those beers. Um, I'd like the hops, the bittering hops, to be... Uh, I guess a little bit more evened out by some of the uh, aroma and other hops. Okay. 
Now just to spend a few seconds on lacing, um, you know, I would say there's probably a fair amount of lacing here. Um, this is surprisingly clear. Um, there is probably just a small amount of hop haze on there. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that in the video or not. It's actually for an Imperial IPA, it's quite uh, golden colored. Uh, usually you'll see the Imperial IPAs approaching more of a, you know, like a burnt orange color. Um, this one is surprisingly col uh, light in color though. Um, so you can see as I pour that out that it is uh, pretty much yellow. So anyway, not the most successful um, representation of an Imperial IPA that I've tasted. Um, do I like it? Yes. Um, I would have to say that if I were scoring this on a scale of 1 to 100, which I am, uh, that I would probably say this is about an 89 to a 90 for me. I'd say probably closer to uh, an 89. But um, it does have some nice qualities to it, though. You know, I'm certainly not uh, displeased by this by any means, but. Anyway, um, I will tell you as well before I go that beers do tend to change flavors as they start to warm up. I've mentioned that before. Um, so maybe the flavor uh, profiles on this one will change a little bit as the beer starts to warm. Now, like most of the beers that I share with you here on the Hoppery, I've let this one sit out for about, you know, 10, 15 minutes just to kind of take that refrigerator bite off of it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sit here. I'm going to finish this beer. You know what? I think I might even review another beer tonight. I've got a really good um, stout upstairs that's been aged in uh, oak barrels that I'd like to share with you guys. Plus, I think I might be able to get my wife to drink a little bit of it as well. So anyway, thanks again for coming to the Hoppery, and I'm going to finish this beer, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye.